let's see about vasomotor rhinitis vasomotor rhinitis is a non allergic rhinitis which is seen throughout the year here the symptoms are common to that of allergic rhinitis which include nasal obstruction rhinorrhea that is running nose and sneezing coming to the pathogenesis of vasomotor rhinitis as we all know the nasal mucosa has rich blood supply both sympathetic and parasympathetic supply is present the sympathetic supply causes vasoconstriction and shrinkage of mucosa whereas the parasympathetic causes vasodilation and engorgement of the sinusoids in vasomotor rhinitis what happens is there is over activity of the parasympathetic system so there is excessive stimulation of the parasympathetic system due to which there is increased vasodilation and there is increased engorgement of venous sinusoids leading to over secretion from the nasal glands this is responsible for the excessive rhinorrhea and the autonomic nervous system is under the control of hypothalamus so emotions play an important role in controlling next coming to the symptoms of vasomotor rhinitis the symptoms are similar to that of allergic rhinitis and they include sneezing which is paroxysmal in nature this is more commonly seen in the morning as soon as the patient wakes up next is excessive rhinorrhea that is running nose sometimes this can be the only predominant symptom the discharge seen here is watery discharge and it is profuse in nature the next symptom is there can be nasal obstruction seen this is more commonly seen at nights and this can alternate from side to side one more symptom can be present that is post nasal drip so these are the four common presenting symptoms paroxysmal sneezing excessive rhinorrhea nasal obstruction and post nasal drip next coming to the signs of vasomotor rhinitis the signs include congestion and hypertrophy of the nasal mucosa especially over the turbinates 
So there is congestion and hypertrophy of nasal mucosa over the turbinates. This is the sign of vasomotor rhinitis. Next, the complications. Complications can be development of nasal polyp, hypertrophic rhinitis, or sinusitis. These can be seen in long standing cases. of vasomotor rhinitis. Finally, coming to the treatment. Treatment of vasomotor rhinitis, there can be medical treatment as well as surgical treatment. The medical treatment includes Avoiding the precipitating factors, like sudden change of temperature, or dust, etc. Next, antihistaminics. and nasal or oral decongestants can be given to relieve nasal obstruction, sneezing and rhinorrhea. Next, topical steroids can also be given like beclomethasone or budisonide. Systemic steroids can be prescribed for a short duration in very severe cases of vasomotor rhinitis. Next, the psychological factor should be removed as emotions play a major role. The psychological factors should be removed. These are all the medical managements coming to the surgical management. For nasal obstruction, we can perform surgeries like reduction of the size of turbinates, which relieves the nasal obstruction. And the other causes of nasal obstruction like the polyp or DNS that is deviated nasal septum should also be corrected. Next one more surgical method is Vidian neurectomy. That is sectioning a part of Vidian's nerve. This is performed if there is excessive rhinorrhea in spite of medical therapy. So, if the medical therapy fails and the excessive rhinorrhea does not improve, then we perform Vidian neurectomy. So, part of Vidian nervous section, which is the parasympathetic supply. So, this controls the excessive rhinorrhea. This is all about the vasomotor rhinitis. Thank you.